Welcome everyone to What Do You Do with a BA in Theater, presented by Dallas Summer Musicals Education and Community Partnerships Department. My name is Seth Johnson and I will be your host for this series. We have a very special guest. Taylor, do you want to introduce yourself today? Hi everybody, my name is Taylor Shelley. I am a, the Digital Marketing Manager for the Bushnell Performing Arts Center in Hart. Connecticut. I'm originally from Texas, born and raised and educated. I went to Texas A&M, whoop, Giga Maggie's, always representing. And shortly after graduating, I moved up to Connecticut. I want to be close to Broadway theater and as close as I can get. And this is my beautiful building. Uh, my office is in this back, back corner that my finger is not allowed to point to. But, um, oh, here it is, over here. And it's a beautiful building and we work with a large variety of shows. That's awesome. So it's a presenting organization, kind of like Dallas Summer Musicals then? Yes, yeah. So we do our, we have our Broadway season, uh, like y'all do as well. Mm -hmm. And we, we do about seven big Broadway shows. And then we do everything in between from there. We have jazz nights, we have uh, hip hop concerts, we do talks. I really like the talks. We had Michelle Obama a little under two years ago. And it was really great to work with her people. Um, very different from working with a musical, you know, mm -hmm. we're talking Secret Service. So you really get a great variety at these presenting venues. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, so let's take it back to college. Um, what made you decide on going to um, a and and kind of what career stuff were you doing in preparation for graduation? Yeah, I chose a and for the culture, but also they have a really great communication department, which is what my major was in. And I also minored in theater with the theater, uh, with a and theater program. Um, a and has, I, I felt had more of like a ground grassroots understanding of education. Like even in theater, we were writing these in, tense papers and learning like kabuki down to the art and actually performing <laughs> it and like we really tore it apart mm -hmm. instead of just seeing it i don't think i've ever seen kabuki other than what we did in our class uh and i think that was more formative on my understanding of theater um i wanted to do performing as a career and i even went to disney world and was a character performer with them for a little while to kind of kick start that part of my life um I realized I, that wasn't the life for me and I wanted, but I still wanted to be involved in the arts. So, um, that's, that's another reason communication became my major, um, in minor, in minor was theater. I switched it, um, as I got started. And so I started looking into what jobs and positions do theaters need? What do they do? Like how, these, these places have to run. And that had never occurred to me before, uh, making that career switch. So, um, I love talking about theater and I love being in theater and communication and marketing. That's what they do. They, yeah. they brag about shows. Essentially. So um, how was that transition from performance life into now the more administration uh, marketing communications world? It was, I, I think it was easier for me than it might be for people who don't perform. You, I was very surprised to find not a lot of people in the administrative side perform. Hmm. Um, a lot of them, however, are stage managers. Like I, I feel like half of our team was a stage manager at one point. I'm the only performer. Um, or, or they're writers. Mm -hmm. We have two writers on the team and two former stage managers and I'm a performer. So, um, that especially into marketing where that is our job is to know these shows we have to see all the shows we have to have a really great understanding and of the brand everything from like cats the musical the eyes had to be a certain like space apart like really nitty-gritty things people don't think about and because i was so invested from the performance level and what these shows emotionally evoke in people and what they can experience when they come to the theater i i felt that transition to be very helpful and probably helped me make it in my career the way I have in marketing. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah. And then you made the move to Connecticut to be close to Broadway. Um, how has that transition been uh, to I, the up north, I guess, <laughs> compared to being here in Texas? <laughs> and um, what have uh, like the job search and uh, what was that job search like when you moved up there? It was 
It was a really insane process. I was living in Texas and interviewing via phone, you know, or Zoom, Skype. Uh, Skype was more popular then uh, <laughs> for jobs in New England. And I remember uh, having a, a uh, Skype interview on a Monday. And then the very next day, Tuesday, they called me and said, do you want the job? But can you start Monday? So I didn't know where Connecticut was in the country. It was, it was a big lip, leap of faith. Um, but there's, there's so much more theater up here, like more condensed, I would say. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of theater in Texas, but I know growing up, if I wanted to see a major show, I lived in really rural Texas. I had to drive two hours to Houston to see a national touring show. Mm -hmm. Whereas where I'm at now, I work at a national touring facility and then there's another one an hour and, and then there's Broadway an hour and 45 minutes away. And then there's Boston two hours away. And that's just, I mean, beside Broadway being Broadway, there's just so much more of it. So when I, uh, yeah, when I moved up here, they took a leap of faith on the Texan and <laughs> it's, it, the types of theater have been kind of different too, which has been really interesting to watch. Um, Tex I feel like Southerners and Texans gravitate more towards comedy, whereas up here they love their dramas and murder <laughs> mysteries uh, <laughs> so much. So much murder mystery theater. But it's, it's super fun. Yeah. Um, have you had any experiences performing um, up there? A little bit. Yeah. A little, I still do community theater because I still love performing. I didn't make a career of it. But uh, yes, I've done only two shows. I've lived up here six years and I've only gotten around to two shows because um, working in theater, you tend to have a theatrical schedule and you're yeah. working late some nights and that's, yeah, that's, it's hard to do a show in the evening. And, um, but yeah, I've done two shows. I did Beauty and the Beast, which was a dream role. I really needed to check off that bucket list. Um, and then Legally Blonde, which was just like a fitness program all, yeah. all the time. I felt like it was, it was just a workout, it, but it was, it's super fun. And that's how I really made a lot of my friends up here too. Cause I had no friends and family when I moved here. Um, and theater really, I mean, you know, we're, we, we met in theater. Like, you, exactly. you really make these connections. And even if you go years without speaking, you're still bonded on this love of theater that never mm -hmm. goes away and never, never, um, never goes out of style. Yeah. Is that too we're, cliche? <laughs> no, we're a strong community and everyone knows everyone yeah. <laughs> in some way or another. Um, yeah. So uh, what does the next couple of years look like for you? Are you uh, sticking around in Connecticut? Is there something that you want to do outside of Connecticut or um, what does that look like? Yeah. Well, the next few years, I still see myself in Connecticut, New England, New York City area. It's just, I love to travel and I love to see theater and I love to drink tea every time I travel. Those are like my two mm -hmm. checklist things when I go. So traveling to Europe from here is one tenth the price of traveling from Texas. Uh, so I'm not done with New England. Uh, I'm trying to experience as much as I can up here and really get a good sense. Um, my drive for getting into theater and uh Working in theater and being close to Broadway was actually driven by Disney. I've always wanted to work for the Disney company and I worked with them for a while. And I met a woman who had the communication degree, the theater minor in an MBA. And she was president at the time of Disney World. And she said, go out, get corporate experience and Broadway experience and theater experience and then come back to Disney and you'll be a really well-rounded candidate for um, more of our corporate positions. So that's a long term goal um, is, is really just getting all the experience I can in this performance and entertainment world. Because no matter what happens in the world, it's not going to go away. We're all going to need this human connection. Definitely, definitely. Uh, do you want to talk about your time with Dis at Disney World, um, being a character actor and just what that job was like? Yeah, it's, it's, it's both complicated and not complicated uh that you know disney's very regimented so um i wasn't in any of the stage productions but you know watching them and seeing them and now having several friends who are a part of them um it's they do everything in their power to keep you safe and to keep you 
um, looking good and maintaining that Disney character integrity the whole time, which is just good practice for any performance value. It's like Broadway, they do eight shows a week and you wanna deliver as strong as a performance one day to that audience as you want the next day. Mm -hmm. they, so they really instill those values in you. And um, what I really appreciated is how much they emphasize character integrity and those relationships you build with a guest in just five seconds to a minute. Um, making those magical memories. I like there's many moments where you have to hold back tears because it's such a beautiful moment and such a like humbling, humane moment of experiencing um, what you do thousands of times a day. And you just, this one hug to a kid could mean the world to them. Um, and it's, oh, it was so, such a beautiful experience. I wish I could stay forever, um, but you know, you do age out at Disney with the characters. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. But it was, don't regret my time there at all. Yeah. I mean, that, that really does sound magical. Um, <laughs> yeah. It is hot. People ask that all the time. It is hot. But growing up in South Texas, yeah, you and I exactly. grew up in the same part of Texas. Yeah. We're like, what? We're near the equator. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't <laughs> mind 90, 110 degree heat. It's fine. Yeah. Yep. It's when it gets colder, that's the problem. <laughs> it is. It is. Today it dipped to 60 here in Connecticut. I'm the only one with a sweater and slippers on. I'm mm -hmm. freezing. I feel that. I always like constantly have blankets on my lap. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yep. Um, so Taylor, before we wrap up, I've been asking everybody um, this question. If you could go back to high school Taylor and give her one piece of advice, what would that advice be? Listen to your English teacher more. <laughs> yeah. I learned, it's, it's so, it, it, like it's even in the theater world, everything you write about yourself and marketing yourself, it comes down to those lessons from English class. Like I, you know, I didn't read Pride and Prejudice and now I'm having to read it. And, mm -hmm. you know, not to mention just writing out your resume and even your acting resume. Everything needs to be to a T. I've seen HR throw out resumes because they misused a comma and misspelled yeah. an easy word. Like, it's, it's very, very important to do that. And you don't have to know what you want to do at that age, but just having those key, those key assets in your arsenal, like good writing, you know, mm -hmm. just double check your spelling and everything. Um, I also, because of the way the world is going, I would also encourage them to take like a, like a computer course of some yeah. kind. I, I took graphic design for two years in college and that is something that's gotten me in the door or in high school, I took two, two years mm -hmm. of it in high school. And then I did some of it in college and that that's been a big interview point. And it's not, I don't, I don't design everything. We have designers for that, but I have to understand the programs and yeah. be able to change the formatting easy. I mean, even for uh, my acting resume, like learning how to export that in a way uh, a producer wants to see it. They, mm -hmm. Some are really particular about their JPEGs, you know, <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> and these are small skill sets. Yeah, they're so, they, they want it the way they want it. And if, if you don't have that simple knowledge of how to uh, do those things and do them well, I think that would be super helpful. And yeah. like I said, everything's, everything's technology. I mean, you can become theater famous by doing a TikTok nowadays. So, <laughs> and piggybacking computers and that, then English. Yeah, emails too. You're going to be writing emails yes. for the rest of your life. Make sure you know how to like format it professionally. Um, yes. I, yeah. There, there's just too many emails that you get that it's just like, whoa, who are you? <laughs> Right, right. And or and to that point as well, even jumping further is like having a nice email name. Like I think mine was like volleyball chick two thousand when I was really when I was younger and I just made my first email and that doesn't really identify yourself. It's easier to yeah. have your name in your email if you can. Absolutely. Uh, that way they they can pick up on it quicker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you will be made fun of if it's a weird email address and not absolutely. <laughs> so, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Take it, take advantage of that uh, Google and just uh, whip up a new one that's like last name, yeah. some important numbers in your life and you're done. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Oh, um, Taylor, this has been a joy. Um, I've loved catching up with you. Um, and uh, thank you for just sharing your stories and uh, your experience with these uh, kids who are going to go off into the professional world and potentially work with us one day. So uh, very exciting for that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, viewers out yes, there. Yes, good luck to all of them. Make friends. Oh, Absolutely, yes. And uh, viewers out there, remember that Dallas Summer Musicals is a resource for you. Um, if you ever need anything, uh, if you have questions, comments, leave them in the comments below. Uh, send us an email. We're happy to help you in as much as we can, especially during these odd times. Uh, so be safe, wash your hands, and have a wonderful day. <laughs>